Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer with a weekly check-in. Today is um, July 11th, it's 5 p.m. New York time, and we'll be taking a look at the incoming CPI data for um, tomorrow, June 12th. That will be released at 8.30 New York time. So if tomorrow we're looking for a 0.3% increase on CPI month over month. That would be higher than the 0.1 last month. Core is expected to rise at 0.3 versus 0.4. Uh, CPI year over year, looking for 3.1 versus 4.0. X food and energy, we're looking for 5.0 versus 5.3. So, uh, I mean, looking at this data, if you kind of look to drill in at the analyst estimates and look at them a little bit more closely, um, what you see here is that the average estimate is pretty much in line with the actual median estimate. And you can see that most of the estimates for the top 10 or so analysts on the street are around this 5% mark. Os Oscar Munoz, who's been one of the first ranked analysts now for some time, is slightly below the street at 4.9%. It's always worth knowing um, you know, where some of these individuals stand. Um, again, when we look at the uh, headline uh, CPI year over year, um, and we take a look at uh, the survey data again, you can see median estimate 3.1, average 3.09. Uh, the first ranked analyst, Ryan Wong, looking for a 3.0. Oscar Munoz, uh, second ranked analyst here, 3.1%. So it doesn't look like you're seeing big dispersions uh, in the um, in the data. It looks like most people are pretty uh, set on these views. Uh, when we look at the um, inflation swap data for the month of June, um, again, market pretty much looking for a 3.0% number. Cleveland Fed is looking for 3.22. Um, Cleveland Fed is a regression model. Uh, it's been running. It, you, it, it, last year, it was a very good model, and it tended to predict very well uh, the actual CPI number. This year, it's been sort of overstating the actual CPI numbers, meaning that if the model is predicting a 3.2, the actual number tends to come in below that reading and it has to do I think with the lag effects of the model but generally speaking it gives us a good sense of the direction and the trend of inflation and the reason why I mention that is because if we look at Cleveland Fed and we look at it for next month in July the estimates are actually for it to increase to 3.6 percent and so that's worth noting that we could be looking at the low print uh, for some time in the CPI numbers based on how the models are working when you look at the curve, um, you'll see that uh, basically the market is even looking for inflation to rise again uh, in July and August, and then maybe start cooling back down into October before rising again into November and December. And what's interesting is if you take this number and you look six months ago, um, this would be June. At one point, uh, we were looking for six months ago for inflation to be a 2% by the time we got to June, um, that obviously has changed. We're now looking at 3%. And what you notice here is that inflation data points uh, for August were around 2.4%. Now they're at 3.3%. Uh, 3 .3%, so about 90 to 100 basis points higher than what was expected six months ago. Um, and this is also important to be aware of is that you know the market's view on where inflation is going to be has changed. And so for the market's current view to continue to be intact, you need to get a number tomorrow that's going to be basically in line with estimates. And so any variation in this could sort of change things around uh, for the market. When we look at the NDX, at least, you can see that the NDX is, you know, it's kind of stalled out right now um, around this uh, 15,300 uh, level and call it 14,700 region. We're trading right now right in the middle of the range. Um, you know, when you look at the, the makeup of the pattern, you could certainly argue that, you know, there is uh, there is a trend line here. Um, we do have, uh, you know, potential for a, a, a triangle like pattern forming here. Um, again, the problem here is trying to figure out, obviously, which way it breaks. And I have a feeling the way it breaks is largely going to be dependent upon the data that we get tomorrow, and then of course we're going to get the um, the initial jobless claims on Thursday, which have also been something that's been important and been focused on. But you can clearly see that there's been a loss of momentum here 
in the actual NASDAQ RSI, the NASDAQ 100. So um, again, when you take a look at this and you can see that we're consolidating here, we're going to get a break one way or the other tomorrow. Um, clearly, if we were to break higher, you know, your next level of resistance comes somewhere around the 15,300 region. And then obviously, you can start looking for higher levels after that resistance level is cleared. If we break lower, you have support probably down at around 14,700 or so. The combination of the pattern, which if you uh, were to connect, you know, these two lines and bring them together, clearly looks like a consolidation uh, distribution type of pattern which would suggest that we get some sort of move lower. Um, the other interesting thing is when you look at the Dow, the Dow is another index we've been following closely, and you can see that the Dow has um, made a decent move higher the last couple of days, but again, it hasn't really been able to clear any of these previous highs. Um, and when we take a look more closely, again, you can see momentum has been sort of consolidating here. It's not really giving us any clear sense of direction and and so this is really sort of telling us that this is a market that's just undecided at this point what it wants to do especially considering that this has been a major sticking point for the dow really going back almost a year now and hasn't really been able to decide whether or not it wants to make a meaningful move higher or not i mean certainly you can look at this pattern and make a case that maybe there's an inverse head and shoulders forming here um, which would indicate, obviously, that you'd get a much higher push and maybe one that challenges the all-time highs. Um, the Dow clearly hasn't seen uh, the same level of decline and steepness that you've seen in other indices. And so this is something worth being aware of, that this is a very big level. I mean, if you were to see the Dow break above 34,600, I think it would probably mean that you're going to see much higher prices to come. Likewise, if we were to break this 33,000, 600 region, um, you're going to see probably a retest of this 32,600 area and maybe even lower than that. Um, the one thing that is interesting is when we look at the ratio of the SPYG to SPYV, um, you can see that the ratio has really broken down over the last three days. Um, and this is important to some degree because it's giving us a little bit of a sense of where the leadership is. And this market has largely been driven by leadership in growth stocks, not value stocks. And so um, clearly this would suggest that the NASDAQ would likely underperform relative to, let's say, the Dow. And if, we take, if you take a look at the ratio, actually, of the QQQ to the DIA, you can see that there's also been what looks maybe like an ending diagonal triangle that's formed here. And clearly today we broke that uptrend. Uh, clearly there's also a negative divergence forming on the RSI with the RSI moving lower and the ratio moving higher. Um, so again, what this tells us to some degree is that one would expect to see the Dow outperform the NDX over the next couple of days and weeks, especially if we start seeing that shift from growth to value. The question, of course, is which way does it go, right? Because again, it takes you back to, yes, um, the QQQs can underperform, but that may mean that the, if the, that the Dow rises at a faster pace than the Qs, or it could mean that the Dow rises and the Qs falls. It could mean that they both fall together. It's just that the Dow falls you know, less than the Qs. Um, but what's interesting though, and what I, what I kind of found interesting when I'm looking at this a little bit further, is if you actually take the Qs and you overlay it with the ratio of the QQQ to the DIA, you can see that generally speaking, the Qs tend to follow the direction of the actual ratio. So this would tell us that if you begin to actually see this ratio materially begin to break down again, that you're actually probably going to see the Qs begin to decline um, and actually begin to actually just drop, uh, which is what this would suggest. And when we take the same ratio and then apply the SVYG to the SVY, SVYG to SPYV, you can also see that it's a similar relationship where the the Qs or the, the, the NASDAQ 100 actually follows the direction of the ratio. And you can clearly see at this point there is a very stark divergence taking place between the two indexes at this point, um, between the ratio and the index at this point. So this is uh, 
this is also telling us that trends continue to persist. One would expect that the next major move in the queues in the NASDAQ 100 would be lower uh, based on this. Now, if we do the same thing and we do it for the Dow and we overlay the Dow chart in here, what you're going to see also is that there's a similar tendency for the relationship between the Dow and the SPYG, the SPYG to SPYV ratio also um, can uh, be an indicator as well. Um, in this case, uh, it's not as strong as a relationship as in the QQQ uh, relationship, but again, this tends to suggest that if we begin to see a real deterioration in growth names, that it's likely going to lead to a deterioration in the Dow as well. So you want to continue to watch these relationships. You want to continue to monitor and try to assess which way things are going to be heading by using uh, these different trends. Again, you can see here that over time, generally speaking, um, when this ratio of the Qs to the Dow has broken down, generally speaking, the market tends to move in the same direction as the ratio. Of course, this would be one period of time where the the um, the Dow just stalled out for some time before uh, it kind of got itself back on track again. So um, I hope this helps you. Um, anyway, have a great rest of your week. Take care. Bye.